Hi again. Um, I'm sure you just saw me in another session, but uh, welcome back to day five of MBA Spotlight. Um, we are doing um, business school sessions from all the top 20 business school programs all over the world. It's the first virtual MBA fair hosted by GMAT Club. We have uh, schools coming in talking about their programs. We also have uh, admission consultants and experts weighing in on your profiles. And finally, we have current students sharing uh, snippets of their MBA experiences. But without much ado, uh, please join me in welcoming Akin from the Tepper School of Business. Akin, why don't you come and take it away? Great, thank you so much, Jovic, for the introduction. Um, yeah, so my name is Akin Obiri. I'm the Director of Recruiting at the Tepper School of Business. Um, and so thank you so much for, for uh, joining us today um, and, and spending some time. Um, and so I joined the Tepper School um, in 2018. Um, and since then I've been uh, pleased to be a part of this community. And so um, I'm happy to talk with you today about um, our MBA program. And so let's just uh, get started then. So at the Tepper School, um, our, our, our mission and philosophy here is to, to educate um, MBA students prepared to lead at the intersection of business and technology. And so that's really the backdrop of, of um, everything that we do here at the Tepper School. Um, and, our, and our students are uniquely uh, positioned to, to lead immediately upon graduation um, in this space. And so um, the tenets of our program, leadership and analytics, is really the heart and the soul um, of, of everything that we do here. And so we focus um, here at the Tepper School on leadership development and equipping our students with an analytical toolkit to uh, allow them to be effective leaders um, while they're in the program and, and, of course, after they leave in their careers. So when we talk about leadership development, um, I'm specifically uh, focusing here on our Accelerate, our Accelerate Leadership Center. Um, and, and, and they were established to support and foster our student leadership development really as part of the core curriculum. Um, and so the Tepper School, in order to do this, hired executive coaches um, who previously worked in corporate roles prior to coming to us. And, and so they're, they're really to impart, able to impart that knowledge directly to our students um, and, and um, really be a support and resource for them while they're here. Um, one of the good things that you'll know is that I'll have access to our coaches while they're both a student um, and then after they graduate as an alum. And so again, our philosophy uh, around leadership development is that leadership can be learned and therefore it's on us here um, to, to help teach it to you. And so um, one, one of the things that we always like to make sure that you know that no matter where you come from, um, or what you have in terms of a, a level of experience, we meet you where you are. And so uh, for each student, it's a tailored and individual approach um, based on the expertise um, of each individual person. And so the process that we follow in order to, to um, uh, develop leadership skills is really a three-phase process. And um, as you can see here, uh, the first phase is, is what we refer to as taking stock. Um, this is this is something that we do immediately upon um, stepping into base camp orientation, and, and we put our students through um, a number of assessments just to get a baseline um, understanding of what skills they currently have. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll work on developing your toolkit. So we'll take some of those skills that we develop that we identified in the assessments, um, and also some of those learning areas that. Um, uh, were pointed out there, and you'll work one-on-one -on -one with our Accelerate Leadership Coaches to refine and build upon those skills. And then lastly, what you'll do is you'll put that theory into practice. And so again, after refining those skills that were identified in the assessment and building upon them, uh, what you'll do is you'll be put into situations either through internships or um, projects at work or um, through club leadership positions to actually put that theory into practice um, and, and show off what you've learned. The other tenant, um, the analytics training, um, is, is basically we look at analytics as the transformation of data into information to make better decisions. Um, and so the tools in which we use to help us do that are through statistics, probability, and mathematical modeling. Um, I'm sure that many of you guys um, on the on, on the session today um, understand that our, our, our curriculum and our program is known to be uh, quant heavy. And so um, when we talk about that, it's these uh, it's these areas in which uh, we're referring to that that 
um, are, are the baseline for a lot of that quantitative work um, that we refer to so often. Um, and then lastly, the models that we help you um, use and develop can be used across functional areas like finance, marketing, um, and operations. And so we, we really show you how you can use these models across different functional areas to, to equip you to be um, a better leader um, in, in an analytical way. So as you heard me refer to before, through um, we do this through optimization, predictive, and prescriptive modeling. Um, and so what, what that basically boils down to, um, it's, it's helping you to determine what's the best decision out of many different scenarios. Um, and, and then um, you'll be able to detect a pattern uh, based on prior data and then use dashboards to help visualize the data and to extrapolate um, what's really going on and, and to help you illustrate further uh, why a decision um, is better over another. Okay. And so when you look at the curriculum and we, we talk about the, um, the analytics at the core, um, it's these three courses here on the left, um, which make up the analytical toolkit or, or the analytical skills. Um, so through probability and statistics, optimization and statistical decision making, um, all of these um, on the backdrop of a business uh, uh, setting. And so those three courses along with the courses on the right, um, the business fundamentals, which I'm sure most of you all are, are probably familiar with, make up the core curriculum um, that students will, will take um, in the first year, year and a half, depending on what format. Um, and so all students will be taking these, these, um, these same courses in these areas um, as part of the core coursework uh, to equip you um, before you move on to your electives. And so as you dive deeper into the curriculum after completing your core coursework, um, you'll have the opportunity to uh, focus in on a couple of different ways. So you can uh, pursue one or more concentrations. Um, you, can, you can choose to go the track option, um, or you can also um, take a look at the different dual degrees. And so um, if you choose to, to pursue the concentrations, um, you know, at the very minimum, you, you have to complete one in order to graduate. But um, given how many courses you have after completing core coursework, many students actually will complete um, uh, two to three, sometimes more uh, concentrations. And, and the way in which you do that is, is by taking at least three courses in any of these stated areas here, um, you're automatically assigned the concentration. Um, and then if you choose to, to pursue a track option, um, in, in any of these five areas, um, it's more of a deeper dive um, than the concentration option. You're basically gonna be completing eight to 10 courses in any of these five areas for more of a deeper uh, survey into these subjects. Um, and in any cases, these options and opportunities are, are, are um, available to our students to really give them a chance to market themselves um, and equip them um, with specific functional uh, knowledge to help them be marketable uh, uh, upon graduation. So um, you, you may have heard, um, but but I'll share this with you all, um, that our MBA is oftentimes referred as one MBA across three different for formats. Um, and that's important because, um, you know, we have three different formats in terms of our MBA offerings, full-time, part-time online hybrid, or part-time flex. Um, and it's important for me to underscore this because it's the same MBA that's earned across all formats. Um, and this is important, again, because it allows for transfer between programs following the completion of the core coursework. Um, and so if you start off in a part-time format, either one of them, either the online hybrid or, or the flex, um, after completing that core coursework uh, in about a year and a half's time, if you so choose, you can transfer into the full-time. Um, but in all cases, the career, student services, and leadership development resources are available to all students. Um, and again, um, this allows uh, for, for a seamless and um, comprehensive uh, um, offering of our program across all three formats. And so talking a little bit um, about how the part-time uh, format works, um, and so we believe that it's it's the best of all pos uh, possible worlds in, in terms of giving you um, an access weekend, which is um, um, traditionally in-person um, uh, weekend uh, mixed with synchronous classes where you're meeting um, each uh, you're, you're meeting about twice 
twice a week um, at a specific time, no matter where you are. And that's also um, uh, in addition to some as asynchronous classes. And so um, as you prepare to meet uh, twice a week for your classes um, at a specific time, there'll be some, some coursework and um, projects that you'll be doing to prepare for that. And so through the access weekends, the synchronous and asynchronous classes, again, it gives you the best blend um, um, in terms of um, an rich uh, experience for the part-time format. So the access weekends um, are important because um, about 40% of the coursework is, is completed and delivered during the access weekends. And so students will come in typically on a Thursday evening um, and, and then stay through Sunday and um, you know, they'll, they'll be working on the academics part um, of uh, finishing up uh, the current MIDI and then getting started on, on the upcoming MIDI, um, but you'll also be focusing on career development. So networking and professional development opportunities, um, we work in corporate visits to to some of our, um, um, our our partners that we work very closely with the MCC, um, and then you'll work on your Tepper roadmap, um, which is a career development plan that you'll that you'll establish uh, early upon starting in the program. And then the synchronous classes, as I, I referred to, um, they're about seventy five minutes each uh, each each uh, meeting, and they happen twice a week. Um, and so uh, no matter where you are, either the West Coast or East Coast or around the world, uh, we take that into consideration in terms of uh, what class is going to make sense with your personal schedule, um, no matter where you are. And then the asynchronous classes, um, that's, that's again, focusing on the different modules um, and, and academic exercises or assignments um, in between and following on the access weekends. Okay. And so as you take a look at some of the outcomes, I know this is um, always a topic of discussion in terms of what you, um, what our graduates uh, are, are, are typically doing after graduation and how successful that they are. Um, you'll see that, um, uh, you know, 93, almost 94% of our graduates received offers um, three months after graduation last year. And so we're really happy about that statistic and hope that that continues to stay steady and, and, and actually rise um, as we work to um, support our students. Um, but you'll see that um, our, our students are engaged in um, a number of different clubs. We have over 40, 40 clubs um, in our, in our uh, MBA program, and, and most students you'll find are engaged in, in multiple clubs. Um, three or four is not uncommon uh, for the typical MBA here at Tepper. Um, and so um, this information, you know, you can, you can refer to it on our website, but it's always happy. I'm always happy to share this because it just gives an idea um, of what you can expect um, you know, during your time and after you leave uh, the Tepper School. And so as you take a look at employment uh, by industry, you'll see that more than 50% of our graduates end up in tech and consulting um, uh, industry areas. And so um, that may not be a surprise, um, um, but, but, the, but the majority of our graduates are drawn to tech and consulting um, in terms of their post MBA industry careers. Um, but when you take a look at um, uh, where they end up by function, you'll see that technology actually is, is pretty short on the list. And so what that actually means is, um, you know, the majority of our students are coming from uh, tech functional areas. Um, you know, they were either direct contributors in a, in a technical area as an engineer or, or, or something along those lines. Um, and then they, they, they transferred into um, um, like tech and consulting industries uh, working on, um, you know, in a, in a management role. Um, and so they wanted to stay close to home in that sense, um, but still stay relevant. And so again, you see consulting by function um, still towards the top um, in terms of uh, popularity. And then this this is a, another important thing to, to kind of point out, just to give you an idea where our graduates actually end up geographically. And you'll see that uh, the majority end up in the uh, on the West Coast, uh, as we understand. A lot of our tech companies are are um, located out on the West Coast. Um, but you'll see that the Northeast um, and South Southwest um, are, are also popular. So it's a pretty good scattering across the United States, with the West Coast being. Um, you know, the most popular location um, post-graduation for our graduates. And here you'll see some of the top employers that we um, routinely work with. Um, you know, it's no surprise that many of them are tech and consulting firms. Um, and so these are these are firms who we, 
routinely see our graduates end up at. Um, and fortunately enough for us, we have um, many of these firms actually have uh, uh, locations and offices within Pittsburgh. So um, again, uh, speaks to our relationship with, with a lot of the firms that our graduates um, end up at, but um, it's no surprise that many of them are tech and consulting firms. All right, and so as we take a look at our global alumni network, you'll see that upon graduation, you'll be welcomed into um, you know, the alumni network uh, of not just Tepper grads, but uh, CMU grads. And so um, over 15,000 Tepper alums worldwide, we have 31 global chapters and uh, over 105,000 uh, CMU alums with, with 51 global alumni chapters worldwide. And so they will be become, you, you will be welcomed into um, this network of alumni um, who you'll no doubt be, be um, tapping into throughout your career um, as you grow and develop. And so, um, you know, really at this point in time, I, I, I wanted to just share with everyone that, um, you know, given uh, where we are um, in terms of um, how uh, COVID-19 has affected us um, during the recruitment cycle, um, you know, we're still accepting applications for fall 2020. And so we've extended our rolling deadline um, to July 31st. And so if you're still in a position to be looking um, at applying the cycle, we're more than happy to, to speak with you um, and to engage with you uh, um, between now and then. So we, through online chats and webinars um, and, um, and the ability to contact a, an MBA ambassador, which is a current student in our program, are ways in which we'd love to engage with you. And of course, if you have questions, um, feel free to reach out to us um, uh, via email or phone. We're happy to talk with you um, about our opportunities. And, and with that, um, I think we can change gears and uh, take some questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aiken, for that really cool presentation. I think we learned a lot about Tepper. But uh, I had, we have a ton of questions coming in. I'm trying to... <laughs> Uh, get the questions in different segments. I'll start with a few admission questions. Then I'm going to ask you a little bit about the MBA experience. And then finally, we're going to close out with some recruiting questions that I'm sure everybody is think thinking about. So, uh, so Tepper um, has been one of the first schools to respond uh, very generously with the COVID-19 situation and the, you know offering deferrals and um, making classes virtual, sort of leading the way, if you will. So I wanted to know from you what has been the impact of this whole pandemic on admissions. And if I were to apply to Tepper this year or for next year, what would be my best move going forward? Uh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, Shavik. I think, um, you know, as you pointed out, we were, uh, you know, fortunate and agile enough to, to respond quickly. Um, to the impact of what COVID-19 has kind of thrust upon us. And so um, we've done so in a number of different ways, um, uh, one of which, as you mentioned, was um, offering deferrals uh, to our incoming class if, if um, they were affected by COVID-19. Um, we've extended our deadlines. Um, you know, it's June, June 19th um, right now. And so we've extended our deadlines and uh, made it made it, um, uh, you know, just maybe alleviated some of the burden for, for those who um, have been challenged uh, with time constraints. Um, we've also um, modified our process to allow applicants to apply without a GMAT or GRE. Um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a climate now where, you know, we've all kind of um, had to just find a way to, to, to work from home or just stay home, um, you know, we, we, we took a look at some of these challenges that we all were being faced with and kind of applied them to the application process and, and made modifications um, to, to help make it a little bit easier. So for the individual who's looking to apply maybe this cycle, um, you know, we're still accepting applications on a rolling basis. And so if you apply today, um, our hope and our plan um, is that you, you we, we'd be able to, to get a decision to you within um, about three weeks or so. Right. Um, and, and then um, if you're looking to apply for a, a future cycle, we have not yet determined whether or not the modifications we've made this year um, are going to be in place for next year. That's something we're still thinking about. Um, but yeah. So um, rolling in, we, we have, we're having a ton of admission questions coming in. So clearly people are still thinking about applying for MBA as soon as they can. So I'm going to try to keep it short, but two questions really. Number one is uh, without having a GMAT or a GRE score, 
uh, which is often a proxy for like you know business school preparedness or sort of intellectual horsepower um, what are the other elements that become even more important now that gmat is out of the way and the second question is you mentioned that you're still taking applications uh, and they're going to be on a rolling basis and your team is doing the best it can to return decisions in three weeks um, does that apply to all applicants domestic and international both or are changing um, geographical and geopolitical constraints have additional burden or in, on international applicants? Yeah, great questions. Um, you know, so for the individual who might be looking to apply without a GMAT or GRE, um, it's going to be very important to uh, speak to the strengths of your file, right? So right. obviously, we're looking for a quantitative aptitude. And so if you come from a STEM background, um, you'll want to highlight um, any coursework you've taken in uh, quantitative areas that could, uh, you know, speak to your ability there. Um, and so that's what I would encourage the applicant um, who may be applying without a GMAT GRE to do. Um, you know, and then two, on the other part of your question, um, you know, we understand that we can only control so much uh, from our position. And so, um, you know, for the individual um, who might be an international student still looking to apply, um, you know, there's some things that you can do to, to help hasten the process, at least from our perspective. Um, so if you apply um, today, you get a, a decision two weeks from now, three weeks from now, um, one of the very um, best things you can do for yourself um, if you're if you're uh, intent on enrolling this fall is to submit your deposit or your intent to enroll. What that will do on our end, um, it will kickstart uh, the administrative process with our Office of International um, Education um, right. and, and begin that I-20 process. And so that's the very best thing that you can do to help yourself if you're still looking to um, make a decision for this fall. Awesome. So moving away from application and admission questions just a little bit and moving to your MBA experience. So what have you seen students um, um, you know, take part in the most in terms of campus resources? So we are getting some questions about you know, experiential learning on a global scale. So if you could highlight some of the MBA experiences that you've seen students love and participate in. Yeah, so I think, um, I think the, the treks um, that we offer or that our students uh, take part in, uh, the professional treks um, are, are really uh, some of the most um, beneficial experiential opportunities our students uh, really take part in. And, and those happen um, around the, the, the breaks and following um, minis. Um, students will have the opportunity to do some career treks um, over the summer where they'll go on site um, to, to survey and, and get a sense for um, what different um, uh, corporate opportunities there are, um, different firms, different industries and careers. Um, and so uh, I, I think um, our students really benefit and enjoy those opportunities. Um, and, and I think that'd be something that um, I, I would I would say would be at the top of the list as far as experiential. Awesome. So when you form an MBA class, and because you know like you have had experiences in admission, when you form an MBA class, you're trying to make the best class for that specific year. So what are some of the specific qualities or traits or attributes that you look for when you make a decision of you know, um, sending an admit decision to an applicant. Yeah, this is a, it, it, it's, it, there's a lot to unpack. Well, I'm, I'm almost asking for a cheat code here. I fully understand, but it'll be great to know from you. Right. You know, so, so it's, it's, it's really difficult to look at it uh, uh, from a 2020 perspective um, because it tells a different story. But, you know, when we look at a file holistically, we're looking for a few things. We're looking for indications of, of impact. Um, uh, how, how have you, how have you been a leader um, in, in your own way? Um, um, how have you shown progression in your career? And of course, um, excellence and academic aptitude. And so we look at all of these things to tell a story. Um, is this individual going to be able to make an impact upon upon graduation after we equip them with our with our MBA? Um, you know, do they have an aptitude for for quantitative ability? Um, as we know, our, our our curriculum is a little bit more quantitative in nature. So we look for those things as well. 
Um, but ultimately, we're looking for a diverse individual, a diverse class, um, to create a diverse uh, class. And so, um, you know, we've seen people come from all kinds of backgrounds, and we and we we, we, we will continue to welcome them um, because, at the end of the day, um, the diversity of the class really just it, it really just enriches the experience for our students in the program. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, getting more questions around tracks and Tepper, the whole MBA has many, many tracks. So we are getting questions around being very interested in the technology strategy and product management MBA track without having an engineering background. So how, if you could share, um, how much of your background in tech or engineering dictated some of your chances for these tracks? Yeah, so um, it's important if, if you don't necessarily have that formal background um, in, say, tech and engineering, but you're drawn to that particular, um, you know, track or even uh, function career wise, yeah. um, it's, it's not necessarily going to be impossible. Um, it's just going to be potentially a little bit more challenging. Um, the individual who has that tech engineering background is going to have that functional knowledge to be able to, to connect the dots. Um, but if you don't necessarily have that, again, think about the role you're going to be stepping into. You're going to be stepping into a management role, right? And right. so we're going to be equipping you with some, some of the management um, skills and functions and, and also some of the, the comprehensive knowledge. So you're not necessarily going to be at a disadvantage. Um, but you know you're you're going to still be able to make an impact. Um, you're just not going to have that that formal background. Right. So getting more questions on tracks because tracks are clearly super popular. Um, so for the energy track, getting questions on specific recruiting opportunities. But if you could maybe lay out for some of the popular tracks and how they tie into student recruitment, that would be really useful. Yeah, so um, the tracks themselves, um, they lend them, they they lend opportunities for for recruitment. But I'd really actually defer, um, you know, to our, our professional clubs um, that that our students are involved in. Um, and so for just about every track or concentration you see, we we have a professional club in that area. Um, and 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 the thought or the design behind that is that those professional clubs do a lot of the legwork and heavy lifting in terms of preparing our students to recruit in those areas. Um, and so our students actually um, take the leadership there um, and do a lot of the work in terms of recruiting um, preparation and making connections and networking opportunities uh, with the different uh, firms and companies in these uh, functional areas. And so um, while the tracks give you the education and knowledge um, that will be helpful upon graduation, it's it's the, the professional clubs in these areas that equip you with the skills to actually get the jobs in those areas. Awesome. So, you know, dovetailing with professional opportunities, you mentioned that tech and consulting um, remain the most popular post MBA employers of choice, right? But I would like to know a little in a little bit more details around, you know, you mentioned top employers at, um, at on the on campus, but what are the what what are some of the top companies uh, for tech and consulting, and uh, for each tech and consulting? What are some of the traits do these employers look for? And finally, uh, and again, I fully understand that is becoming a three questions baked into one. Uh, what are some of the things that students do um, to get themselves ready for those interviews, for those um, resume applications, and to eventually get the job? Yeah. So um, as you probably saw from my previous slide, uh, you know, the tech and, and consulting firms that we routinely uh, see our graduates end up in are, you know, Amazon, Google, um, you know, Facebook. Even now we, we've seen, um, you know, a lot of our graduates end up there. And and, and so, um, you know, uh, what, what that what that I, I think what that means or, or in terms of how we help our, our students get there is, um, you know, we equip them with, with the, the hard skills. Um, we're pretty good at that with our curriculum. Um, what's important and what, you know, sometimes goes under understated is, is some of the soft skills or the leadership skills, um, which I mentioned early on is, is, is it really actually um, part of our core curriculum. So, um, you know, there's some, some, are some specific things that each student who graduates from the Tupper School needs to do. It's part of the curriculum in order to graduate um, related to leadership development. And so it's really the combination of those two, the hard skills and the leadership skills, 
um, that allow our graduates to do really well um, in tech and consulting because as you know, um, you know, leadership and decision-making, um, the ability to communicate and use empathy, um, uh, all, of this, all of these align with what we try and educate our graduates um, between our, our, our hard skills and uh, leadership skills. And so, um, you know, that said, um, you know, I think I touched on maybe two parts of the question and <laughs> the third part, if you could remind me. Yeah. So, I mean, so some of the things are not only the companies that come to campus, but also how do you really prep for specific yes. portions of that recruitment journey? Right. So our MCC, our Master's Career Center, um, which actually um, is one of the top um, rated across the country and in large part because we've got um, uh, the staff there have, have, have been there for uh, many, many years, um, you know, decades of combined experience. Um, and so with that has come, um, you know, really good relationships with top firms that we re re our students recruit at. And so they'll be working with you one on one um, to do things as menial as uh, resume prep. Um, you know, working on your resume to make sure it highlights what, what employers are looking for, um, right. but also uh, prepping and coaching you for interview, um, for, for the interview that you got coming up and, and really making sure you're, you're prepared for that. And so they're there to support our students, um, um, not only while they're there, but, um, you know, even after they leave. Awesome. So getting a few questions on uh, something that you mentioned, the Tepper MBA um, often has... Um, a ton of quantitative elements attached to it. Like you mentioned statistical modeling and whatnot. And I think a lot of business schools do, but I think for Tepper, it remains a focus. <laughs> so for students with a non-quantitative background, um, what are some of the ways they can preempt some of that coursework so they don't feel completely lost in the class? Do you have any recommendations on some pre-MBA academics that they can pursue? Yeah, so I think there's 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 two things there. So um, you know, we, we saw the business fundamentals. Um, I think exposure to those in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we're starting to see, um, you know, a lot of these MBA prep uh, prep uh, courses come about, and so those are certainly helpful. Um, but specifically on the quantitative side of things, um, you know, if you don't have a background um, in a uh, heavy background in um, statistics um, or or math really you know calculus if you haven't taken that um, that'll be helpful um, yeah. but in any case what we will do or what we spend a lot of time doing early on in the curriculum is, is making sure that um, no matter what your background is you're equipped with uh, the fundamental skills uh, and we do that typically through a prep course that we offer um, if, if we think that it might be useful um, during base camp or over the summer prior to arriving um, but but each student will have a fundamental baseline in terms of um, the quantitative skills they're going to need in order to, to progress in the program and to be successful. Right. Right. OK. Uh, yeah. No, thank you for that. Um, sort of running out of time, but I want to squeeze another question in about entrepreneurial opportunities and resources to actually get there. So can students coming in um, with an entrepreneurial background or having already launched a company, work on that company as a part of their summer internship or actually end up using resources to make their company stronger? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, this this option, if you choose to go the entrepreneurship uh, track option, um, you'll be working closely um, with the Swartz Center of Entrepreneurship, um, which is actually located in the Tepper Quad, um, right within the business school. Um, and so um, you'll, you'll be given the opportunity to, 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 to work um, on your, 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 your company or your startup if, if that's something that you already have coming into the program. It's a great space to do that. It's a great um, incubating space to do that. Um, what you'll find um, is that there will probably be uh, students, uh, like-minded students who are looking for opportunities that you can collaborate with, not just within the business school, um, but across campus. Um, um, cross-campus collaboration is something that just happens, um, you know, day in and day out at the Tepper School. So that's something, um, you know, pursuing the entrepreneurship track that you'll have the option uh, to, to benefit from. Awesome. So I also see Ben in the background uh, fielding a ton of these questions. <laughs> and also, uh, I just put it up because um, if you want to talk about profile conversations, feel free to 
email Ben and uh, and get that going. But this was very, very helpful. Uh, thank you so much, um, Aiken, for spending the time with us. But uh, if you had to leave our audience with one last thought on Tepper admissions or you know, becoming a better applicant or a stronger applicant to Tepper, what would that be? Yeah, um, I would encourage you um, after everything that you've read on our website or a webinar uh, to speak to us directly. Um, there's no substitute for that. Um, you know, uh, we, we'd love to talk with you. We'd love um, to, 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 to hear some of your post MBA plans and, and talk with you specifically about how the Tepper MBA can to help get you there. So uh, reach out to us. There's the contact information um, on the slide there if you'd like to, to speak with us, but we'd love to speak with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll be in touch, but this was fantastic. And yeah, you have a great day. Great. Thank you so much, Jovic. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Aiken. All right. Take care.